Hello, and welcome back to Talking Planning. Now, before we get too engrossed with today's video, I thought it would be important to sit back and have a quick look through what trains I've already reviewed on this channel. So first, we checked out Queensland Rail's new generation rolling stock, the NGRs. My second video was a look at the interurban multiple units, the IMU 100 120 series, and the last train video I released was a quick review of the Intercity Express. So let's move into today's review on Queensland Rail's electric multiple units, our first electric trains in passenger service. In 1979, Queensland Rail ushered in a brand new era of suburban rail travel. Just a few years prior, there were still steam trains on the network, and only by then had some just been replaced with diesels, and now, in late 1979, the first electric trains entered service on the recently electrified line between Fernie Grove and Darra stations. These, of course, are the electric multiple units which were built by Walkers for Queensland Rail between 1979 and 1986, and there's still a few running around the network even today. Prior to 1979, Queensland Rail passengers were very used to the stainless steel SX cars, or even older, the Red Rattler units, which were a bunch of wooden carriages with weird door layouts and very old fashioned seats and were very loud, noisy and used to crash bang and wallop over expansion joints of track. The EMUs brought a very new, a very sophisticated level of refinement to the network not previously experienced by customers. Let's look at the features that made these trains far more comfortable than their predecessors. The first key feature is pretty obvious, air conditioning. Given Brisbane's subtropical climate and the humidity that you will often get, having air conditioning makes the passenger experience so much better, particularly on those hot, humid days. And especially during peak periods, when trains fill up, it means that you don't have all the nasty sweatiness and just grossness that you get on unair conditioned trains. If you've ever caught a tube train in the middle of summer or a Sydney trains S set, you'll know exactly what I mean. With the EMU, they also swapped out the vinyl seats, which much older trains would have had with cloth, which makes them a little bit more comfortable. The EMUs also feel a far more ergonomically designed product than older trains. There's a good blend of forward and rearward facing seats, depending on the direction of travel. There are seats near the doors, which are sideways and nice and close to the door, which are perfect for people with limited mobility. And there are a lot more um, hand grips and holding points. So if you have to stand, you can hang on more comfortably and safely. There are grab rails on the ends of the seats. There are general upright poles like you get on modern buses. And there are also interesting grab points right around the doors so you can hang on if the train is really full and you need to stand close to the doors. They also prove a handy spot to hold on if the train has to slow down or stop suddenly and you're near the exit of the train. Over the years, these trains have been modernised and the handle turn doors have been replaced with push button doors on many trains. You'll still find handle turn doors to go between the two carriages. There's also key upgrades like a passenger intercom for emergency situations and information screens so you can see what the next station is and it will give you updates about the train. These features are important to the evolution and they're 
features that modern train passengers expect, so it's good that the electric multiple units were upgraded to meet these standards. Which is something I would say that trains in Sydney and Melbourne often didn't get with their older models. So kudos to Queensland Rail for actually upgrading the oldest trains in their fleet to have these modern features. Anyway, enough of me blabbering on about what these trains have and don't have and why the EMU is such a good train. Let's go for a nice photo montage and a bit of a look around and see for yourself what it would be like to travel on for a journey with this video montage now. Sadly, like most other older Queensland Rail trains, these suffer from the plight of dirt, grime and graffiti. The main graffiti culprit for QR trains? Window etchings. It's my pet peeve seeing windows that have been etched into, and unfortunately, with the age of these EMUs, they're just not going to get replaced to fix the graffiti problem. That being said, by and large, the rest of the EMU fleet these days is actually quite clean and apart from the occasional bit of dirt and grime that's stuck in the carpets, yes, these trains are actually carpeted inside, and sometimes some dusty seats, they're normally very, very clean. Although I will admit one of the trains I caught had some unidentified slime below some of those seats. I don't necessarily want to investigate further into what that is. But sadly, my journey on board today's EMU is coming to an end and I'm going to be getting off the train at the next stop, Central. I guess my question is, seeing all the photos of these EMUs getting scrapped, which is really sad because they're a fantastic train, I wonder how long is left for the rest of the remaining fleet. It seems that the NGR deliveries have pretty much stopped at 775, and I wonder where we're gonna go next and how long the remaining EMUs have got left. My guess though is be safe rather than sorry and try and catch the rest of them while you can.